There's a lot of information you can learn about the foods you eat by just switching over to the back and reading the food label. So on our food label, you actually want to start up at the top. This is the most important piece. It tells you the serving size and the servings per container. Too often we're not paying attention to this, but all of the information on the label is in relation to just one serving size, and so it can completely change the nutritional value. So the serving size is the amount that you are intended to eat. If you eat more than one serving size, all of the information will double or triple depending on how much you are eating. You also want to pay attention to the servings per container because not everything is meant to be eaten in its entirety. If you eat an entire package and it has eight servings, all of those calories are multiplied by eight. And then you could have eaten your whole day's worth in just one sitting. Next does come the calories. This is the most important piece when it comes to weight maintenance, gain, or loss, because the energy in versus your energy out is how we maintain, gain, or lose weight. How the calories are made up of is starting with fat. We're not actually worried so much about total fat as we are about the types of fat in our food. So the first on the list is saturated fat. Saturated fat is not good for our heart as it causes blockages in our arteries, raises our bad cholesterol, that LDL, and that creates the risk for stroke. So with your saturated fat, you actually wanna use your daily value percentage that's over to the right to help you gauge how much you're eating. You wanna to try to aim for no more than 10% of your calories throughout the day. The next is trans fat. Trans fat is actually a little worse for the heart than saturated fat because not only does it raise our bad cholesterol, it also will lower our good cholesterol, the HDL. So it's a double hitter on the heart. It's so bad that we actually want to limit our consumption to no more than two grams in a day. The tricky part is sometimes it says zero even though there's trans fat in the food. If there is less than 0.5 grams, the food companies can actually list it as zero. So we need to be smart and educated on what foods contain trans fat. Trans fat is found in any foods that have been deep fried, any of your bakery items, and actually margarine. You can also read your ingredients label for the words hydrogenated oils. That will be your key to know that even if it says zero, there is definitely some source of trans fat in the food. The next fats, sometimes listed, and that is up to the food company, and sometimes they are not there, and that is your unsaturated fats. There's two different types, polyunsaturated and monounsaturated. We want to increase our consumption of fats in the unsaturated type, as this will lower our risk for heart disease. The next item that we're concerned about is sodium. Sodium raises our blood pressure and puts us again at risk for heart disease. So we wanna to limit to 1500 milligrams in a day. Now, this is actually pretty low despite how the number sounds very high because most of us in America are consuming around 4,000 milligrams. So if we can at least limit down to 2400, that would be helpful. Just to put that in perspective, just a little teaspoon of salt, the very tip of your finger, is 2300 milligrams, so it's not that much. Next, you have total carbohydrate. So carbs are great, but we need to make sure that we're eating the right types of carbs. How we gauge how good of a carb we are eating is by using the fiber and the sugars. Fiber is great. We need to aim for, for women, 25 grams in a day, and men, 38 grams in a day. This food item will help us lower our bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, so it lowers our risk for heart disease. It also promotes gut health. It's the food for that good gut bacteria, and it also promotes regularity. With your sugars, you want to make sure that you're paying attention to the types of sugars. So sometimes on a label, like the one I have here, they have been switching over to show you not just with all sugars, but which ones are added, as there are naturally occurring, and there is the refined sugars as well that can be added into a food for some extra sweetness.
These added refined sugars are the ones that are putting us at a higher risk for diabetes because it's spiking our blood sugar and causing insulin resistance. So we want to try to limit our consumption of these added sugars to no more than 10% of our day. And lastly, we have protein. Protein is very important for many reasons, including skin and hair health, and it's also going to be the basis of how we create all of our DNA. So we want to take in a healthy dose, but everything is always better in moderation. We should be aiming for no more than 20 grams at a meal time because that is all we really need, which can be found in just three ounces of meat. But there are plenty of non meat sources for protein, including beans, whole grains, and even your vegetables. So next time you pick a food, check the label so that you know how your body is going to react so that we can be as healthy as possible. If you have any other questions or you'd like to meet with me, you can always schedule as I hold classes and even one-to-one -one sessions. You can visit the Crozier Keystone website to schedule.